Welcome back to my series on Story of Yangshi Palace, a deep dive into China's most popular banned sea drama. Here's my chart that displays the state of affairs after episode 1. There are 69 more episodes to go. 69 more hours of content. These aren't all the characters. These aren't all the lines. It's just going to get worse for me from here on out. I don't know how well you can see the colours, but black means marriage including concubines, brown means a servant-master relationship, red means siblings, blue means parentage, and purple means friendship. Later on down the series you will see orange lines indicating yeeted slash yeeted by, and pink, which means romance. Let's summarise last episode, shall we? So we have Wei Ying Lo entering the palace to become an embroidery maid because she wants to find out who allegedly yeeted her sister Ying Nin. She becomes friends with fellow embroidery maid Jia Xiang. Then we have Emperor Qianlong. There is going to be a lot of lines for this man and I'm not adding blue lines for him because if a concubine has a child, it's his. So I'm just doing the lines from the concubines to the children. Just assume that it's his child. And you have his harem. Empress Fucha is his main woman and did have his second son who unfortunately passed three years prior. She has her own personal servants, Er Qing and Ming Yu. We've got Consort Xian who is being nagged by her mother because she's only reached the consort rank after all this time and she wants her to aim higher. She's ignoring her mum on this. She's happy where she is. Then there's Noble Consort Gao, who uses Concubine Jia as her personal minion. We have the newcomer from episode 1, who will become Imperial Concubine Shu. And lastly, but not least, we have Imperial Concubine Yi, who is said to be good friends with the absent Noble Lady Yu. Let's dive right into episode 2. The maids who pass the exam move into their quarters, and Aunt Fung is supervising them. Jian Shui, a maid who will become a menace, pours water over Ying Lo's bed out of jealousy for manager Wu praising her. Ying Lo pours a bucket of water over her and her bed in retaliation. While lying in bed, Ying Lo thinks about seeing her sister in a casket. Publicly, her family say that she died of an illness, but they believe that she really hung herself after being expelled from the city. We learn that Ying Lo's mother died when she was young and Ying Nin raised her. The Wei clan will not bury Ying Nin in the family cemetery as they believe she dishonoured them. And Ying Lo pledges to enter the Forbidden City. After that flashback, back in the present day, Noble Consort Gao thinks that there is definitely something up with Imperial Concubine Yi. At Lady Yu's residence, Imperial Concubine Yi is visiting and panicking. She knows that Noble Consort Gao suspects something is up. Just as she's there, Noble Consort Gao visits Noble Lady Yu, bringing an Imperial Doctor to examine her. Noble Lady Yu declines the examination, saying it's merely a cough. But Noble Consort Gao forces Noble Lady Yu to have the examination, and so Imperial Concubine Yi goes to the Empress begging for help. The Empress returns with Imperial Concubine Yi, just as Noble Consort Gao is ordering the Doctor to force medicine down Noble Lady Yu's throat. Noble Consort Gao claims she is trying to help, and the Empress asks what the doctor is giving Noble Lady Yu. He says that he is giving her low quack cream for her symptoms, but Imperial Concubine Yi proclaims that it's clear that Noble Lady Yu is pregnant. Noble Consort Gao accuses Imperial Concubine Yi of deceiving her by telling her that Noble Lady Yu had merely a cough and was not pregnant. Noble Lady Yu says she asked Imperial Consort Yi to keep quiet until it was confirmed and that all of this was her fault. Imperial Concubine Yi refutes this, saying she didn't tell as she was afraid somebody would try to harm Noble Lady Yu and her unborn child. She claims that she believes that Noble Consort Gao wanted to poison Noble Lady Yu with the medicine. The Empress makes the doctor taste it, but he's fine and doesn't detect the medicine. Noble Consort Gao is furious and demands punishment for being lied to and slandered. Imperial Concubine Yi volunteers punishment in place of Noble Lady Yu. 
Back with Ying Lo, she asks Auntie Jiang about her sister, but Auntie Jiang denies knowing her and says that she would have used another name in the palace. Ying Lo goes along with the auntie and another maid, Ling Long, to measure noble lady Yu for maternity clothes. They witness Imperial Concubine Yi being slapped in the face in public by Noble Consort Gao's maid. Noble Lady Yu begs to be hit instead, but the servant refuses. They all go to Noble Lady Yu's home, and Noble Lady Yu wonders aloud why the poison wasn't detected. Ying Lo informs her that the old leaves of the plant aren't poisonous, but the new ones and the pit are, and too much of it can cause death. There wasn't enough of it to be detected as the doctor only had a small sample. Noble Lady Yu wants to go and tell the Empress but Auntie Zhang pleads her not to and so Noble Lady Yu goes by herself but Min Yu does not let her in informing her that the Empress does not feel well. Ying Lo on the other hand is forced to kneel till dawn for her mistake. Auntie Zhang wants her to learn a lesson about interfering with affairs and takes her to see that Imperial Concubine Yu has yeeted herself due to being humiliated by Noble Consort Gao. Angry, Ying Lo punches a tree, but she doesn't know that it is said to house a sacred spirit and Manager Li catches her as he passes by with the Emperor. She bows down low so the Emperor doesn't see her face. The Emperor orders her to be caned 30 times and Ying Lo says that she is new to the palace and didn't know the rules, but there is a reason that she did it. And the episode ends there. This is what our chart looks like after episode two. We have some more maids and supervisors. They have a brown line. Even though it isn't really a servant master relationship, the aunts are supervising the maids. And we have our very first orange line of death. When noble consort Gao ordered her maid to repeatedly slap, Imperial Concubine Yi over and over again, she knew what would happen. You're not supposed to punish consorts by inflicting injuries on the facial area because from that point on they are quote, damaged goods, unquote. The Emperor is not going to want to spend time with them and produce an heir with them when their face has been damaged and therefore there was nothing really left in the world for Imperial Concubine Yi to live for so Noble Consort Gao basically yeeted her. Ying Lo tells the Emperor that she had a dream where a spirit asked her to come and scratch its back and says she was doing that and therefore it must have been the spirit visiting in her dream asking her to scratch its back. The Emperor is like, yeah, whatever, telling her to get up and go away and he continues on his journey. He's gone to see his mother, Empress Dowager Chongqing, who lectures him about not eating and working too much. She asks him if he knows who Noble Lady Shu is, to which he says, uh, who? Noble Lady Shu, by the way, is the consort that was inducted into the harem in episode one. The Empress says, well, you need to spend more time with your consorts. The Empress has been in bad health as of late, and you kind of need to get on making airs, is what she's trying to say. She's telling him he's not bonking enough. She understands that the Empress is his legal wife and did birth him a son, and so she accepted the favouritism at that point, but that son is now yeeted, and he needs to spend more time with his other concubines or it's gonna be bad. He leaves, but she does confide in her maid that she worries that the rest of the concubines will be neglected. The emperor goes back to the tree, and suddenly it dawns upon him that Ying Lu's story doesn't make any sense. He wasn't really thinking about it at that point. He had too much going on, but he was like, hang on a minute. She lied to me. He tasks manager Li, who I think is actually head eunuch Li, but he's a servant of the emperor. Anyway, the Emperor tasks Li with finding her. At Changchun Palace, the Empress has found out that Ming Yu refused Noble Lady Xu an audience with her in the previous episode, and she is fuming. Ming Yu says she did this because she's worried about Empress's health when she involves herself in the matters of other consorts, but Empress says that is her job. Ming Yu expresses her worries that Noble Consort Gao is plotting against her. Empress gets out of her seat, she is vexed, but she is interrupted by the Emperor entering, and he asks her what is going on, what can't she do because of her health? 
Empress lies and says that because noble lady Yu is pregnant with his heir, she wants to set up a food store for the people to bring his son good fortune. But Ming Yu and Ah Ching don't believe that she's in well enough health to orchestrate it herself. There's obviously unspoken words between the Emperor and the Empress. He asks her if there's anything that she would like to say to him, and she just says that he should remember to take care of his health. It's already been established that since the death of their son, Empress has been very distant from the Emperor, and this scene is just so good for that. It's just a few seconds of them saying nothing, but the way they look at each other, there's something obviously they both want to say to each other, but either can't or aren't ready to. The Emperor obviously overheard Ming Yu's concerns about Noble Consort Gao because Manager Li visits Noble Consort Gao at Chu Xia Palace, bringing with him a copy of the Diamond Sultra, a Buddhist text. And the Emperor wants her to copy it out by hand. Basically, he's telling her to simmer it down and to stop being so spicy. Oh, and he wants her to copy out all 5,000 words right now. Oh, and um, Lee can't leave until he's witnessed her write it all out, and she's incredibly salty about this. The maids walk through the palace and see the guards, and we learn that guards outside of the red walls are lower five tiers of the Eight Banner Army, whereas guards inside the palace are all noblemen. Subtext-wise, this is telling Ying Lo that whoever attacked her sister was a nobleman. A guard, whose name we will learn is Chia Ching Chi, takes interest and follows them. He throws a pebble at Ying Lu's feet to get her attention as she makes an excuse of losing her handkerchief to go back and talk to him. The pair go into a building to speak privately, but fellow maid Ling Long snitches about this to Aunt Fung and they suspect an affair with the palace guard, which is again a big no-no. Apparently, according to Ching Shi, Uncle Wei told him that she was in the palace. It turns out that he was engaged to Ying Lo's older sister Ying Nin, but abandoned her, and Ying Lo believes that this is because he couldn't go through marrying somebody of a lower class. They are discovered by Aunt Fung, but Ying Lo puts a basket over her head and begins to cane her so that he can escape without being seen. Ying Lo says that she went to go and get her handkerchief and then went into the building to use the bathroom and then she realised someone was following her and so put a basket over the head of the spy, not realising it was Aunt Fung. She privately tells Jia Xiang that it will take a while for Aunt Fung to recover and will buy her a little bit of time to cool down. But then Ying Lo notices that Aunt Fung dropped a pendant, a pendant made by her sister Ying Nin. Ying Lo arrives back, seeing another maid, Bing Qing, getting Aunt Fang tea. Ying Lo shows her the pendant, and Bing Qing says a maid called Armin made it. She learns that her sister's name in the palace was Armin, and she's also told that Aunt Fang does not like talking about Armin. Aunt Fang realizes that Ying Lo's full name, Wei Ying Lo, sounds really familiar, but can't quite put her finger on where she's heard it before. Back over to Noble Consort Gao, she has completed her writing assignment and she is pissed. She finds out that the Emperor went to go and see the Empress before her gift of the Diamond Sultra arrived and blames Empress for her punishment. Master Li is on task trying to find Ying Lo by getting all of the maids in the palace to repeat the sentence about scratching the tree to him, but he can't recognise any of their voices so far and Aunt Fung asks Ling Long to spy on Ying Lo. The new consorts that were selected in episode 1, Noble Lady Xu and female attendant Qing, go to the embroidery store to pick up their new clothes. And Noble Lady Xu recognises Ying Lo from the Xu incident. She was there when Lady Wu Ya had her sole of her shoe filled with pollen, and then she witnessed Lady Wu Ya being dragged out by the guards. So she thinks rightly so that ying lo had something to do with that but ying lo plays dumb noble lady shu warns her that she isn't as foolish as lady Wu Ya was manager lee comes to the embroidery maids to hear their voices to find ying lo fortunately ying lo is tasked with ling long to take noble lady shu's clothes back to her residence and so doesn't get caught by lee on their way to her residence, Noble Lady Shu complains that she's been there an entire month and hasn't seen the Emperor. 
This is interrupted by our first glance of Imperial Guard Fuka Fuhang. All of the maids lose their shit, basically. They are fangirling hard, and Ling Long explains to Ying Lo that he is the Empress's younger brother. She even pretends to fall down in front of him to get his attention, but Ying Lo pulls her up from the ground. And Ling Long is like, what are you doing? And Ying Lo is like, sis, what are you doing? What are you playing at? And the episode ends. Referring back to the chart at the end of this episode, we have our first pink line of romance with Qing Shi and Ying Nin. We have the Empress Dowager, Mummy of the Empress, and we also have the Empress's brother next to her, Fu Ha. Next episode, there is a lot to unpack here, and it's very Empress-centric, which I love. Ling Long says that her fake fall was basically meant to entice Fu Hong to improve her status should there be a romance blossoming, but Ying Lo says she's basically really stupid because if they were caught, only she would be punished because he's nobility. And this has subtext referring to what happened to her sister. Also, she says that shameless pig brain men do the same thing referring to Xing Qi's refusal to marry Ying Nin due to her status. They both go their separate ways, but she is stopped by Fu Hong, who overheard the entire conversation. He says that she appears to be prejudiced against men and asks if she dislikes him or the emperor. Ying Lu says he's mistaken, that she wasn't talking about him or the emperor, and that if he thought it was about him, he shouldn't think about himself that way. Flipping it on him, very good Ying Lu. Fu Hong sees through this and says that she's very cunning, and as she leaves, he assures her that the guards are good men. Over at Changsheng Palace, Empress is looking at a necklace that belonged to her deceased son, Yong Lan. Fu Hong, who is her brother, enters and sees her. He leaves a box on the side and snatches the necklace and goes outside to throw it in the bushes. Empress panics and runs outside with him, asking Min Yu and Arqing to find it turning to Fu Hong, angrily thumping him and demanding, since when was it okay for you to touch my things? He says Yong Lian has been gone for three years and yet she hasn't moved on, that she's forgotten her responsibilities as a Qing Empress. Empress says she hasn't been able to heal from the loss and she scolds Fu Hong. He's never experienced the pain of childbirth and then the pain of losing that child. Fu Hong realizes she's been blaming the Emperor for the loss or for not going through the same pain as she is. The Emperor says it's as if the Emperor has forgotten all about their son. She desperately searches for and finds the necklace before storming back in. Fu Hong follows and tells her how their mother worries and their father had to apologize for having a weak daughter. Gao Bin, noble consort Gao's father, received a promotion, as did she during that time, by the Emperor's father who is dead at the beginning of this series. Rest in peace, Daddy Emperor. Now, Noble Consort Gao is Vice Wife and the Gao Clan is powerful, which will affect the Fuka Clan. He gives her the box he left. Again, sometimes it's spelt with a H and sometimes it's not. So is it Fuka or Fucha? I will never know. As he leaves, he passes Consort Chan. She was mentioned in episode one, but was absent in the consort meeting due to sickness. He asks a favor of her and she goes to see the Empress alongside her maid, Yuhu. They speak briefly and a maid, Hong Lo, brings in tea. And it looks like she's been crying. Consort Chan explained that last year Hong Lo turned 25, the age maids can leave the palace. But because Empress was so unwell, nobody wanted to bother her with what they considered this trivial matter, and so she wasn't reminded to add Hong Lo's name to the list of maids to leave the palace. And now her fiancé has become far too impatient waiting and wants to marry another girl. Empress insists it is not a trivial matter and is a significant part of Hong Lo's life and she tells Ming Yu to add Hong Lo's name to the list and promises Hong Lo a dowry so that she can be married off in extravagance. Empress regrets that she didn't notice and says she has neglected her duties. She understands Fu Hung now and knows that he asked Consort Chun to show her the consequences of her negligence. Consort Chun explains that Fu Hung didn't ask her to bring up Hong Lo and her situation. Instead, 
She wasn't part of that, it was just a coincidence. Fu Hong actually asked Consort Chun to suggest that Empress opens the contents of the box that he gave her. In the box is a decree naming Yonglan as the Emperor's heir, bestowing him the title Crowned Prince, meaning that when Yonglian died, he had lost his heir and valued him more than just another one of his countless children. Something Empress feared he viewed Yonglian as disposable, just another son, that could be regained in time from any one of his consorts. The following day, Ming Yu says Empress should get up, but Ah Chin says they should do their normal routine of telling visitors to go away because she's sick. But the Empress shouts out that they should come in and get her ready. The consorts are gathered, waiting to pay respect to the Empress. Noble Consort Gao gets sick of waiting and tells Concubine Jia that they should just get up and go. Which is perfect timing because the Empress arrives like a boss and completely shades Noble Consort Gao. If you thought their first meeting in episode 1 was a good shading, that shading was probably a hmm, 7 out of 10. This is a 10 out of 10 shade from the Empress totally being thrown. She calls out Noble Consort Gao on her lack of manners and basically says to everybody, Hi, I'm back. She asserts her dominance like a badass, reminding everybody she's here, she's ready, and she's going to rule these palaces. She tells Noble Lady Yu that she will send extra people to care for her as she's pregnant, and that if anyone, <coughs> Noble Consort Gao, <coughs> offends her that she should report to the Empress, who will deal with it for her. Empress also says that she will petition the Emperor to have a grand burial for Imperial Concubine Yi, and Noble Consort Gao protests, saying that Imperial Concubine Yi yeeted herself in the palace, which is a crime, and says that if a maid did the same thing, their families would be executed. Empress declares that Imperial Concubine Yi died of an illness. And then she says, But Noble Consort Gao says that she yeeted herself. Who is right? She asks Consort Chun, who says that the Empress is right. She asks Consort Xian, who of course says the Empress is right. And Noble Lady Shu also declares that the Empress is right. This is so much shade. She basically tells Noble Consort Gao that I'm your superior and I'm always right. Sit down, bitch. The reason that the Empress is declaring that Imperial Concubine Yi died of an illness is because it is a crime to yeet yourself in the palace. It's such great disrespect to the Emperor and to the heavens. And therefore, whenever this happened, a lot of the time people would say, oh, they just, they died of an illness. But Noble Consort Gao is forced to agree in the end and Empress warns whoever stirs trouble will be punished. <coughs> Noble Consort Gao. <coughs> Back at Chu Xia Palace, Noble Consort Gao is fuming, and Concubine Jia implies that this could be trouble for them. A maid bumps into Consort Xian, who excuses her, and the maid begins to cry as the head of her department won't let her visit her sick mother. Consort Xian says that she will ask the manager personally to let her go. Consort Chun sees this and tells Consort Xian that she is virtuous and helpful and warns her about Noble Consort Gao using this against her. They take a walk together and it takes a shady turn because Consort Xian implies that Consort Chun is close to the Empress for benefit, but she doesn't quite understand her. She doesn't understand her or her goals. There's some shade going on here. Back again at Chunxia Palace, Ji Lao sees the maids giving spring clothes to Noble Consort Gao, and Ling Long sucks up to her. She informs her about Ying Lo warning Noble Consort Yu about the loquat cream being poisonous. Hmm, this interfered with Noble Consort Gao's plan to yeet Noble Lady Yu. And so she returns to the embroidery house and asks personally for Ying Lo to come and fix the spring clothes. Ying Lo arrives and pretends to be mentally disabled so that Noble Consort Gao doesn't take her as a credible source and thinks that nobody else would take her seriously and therefore she isn't a threat. Problematic, I will say that. Effective, yes.
For this chart, I've only really added maids of consorts, a couple you would have seen before in previous episodes, such as Jilan, which is the maid of noble consort Gao. She was first seen slapping the heck out of Imperial Concubine Yi's face. You would also have seen Consort Shan's maid, who is Jinar beforehand. I haven't really added them in until now because they aren't that relevant, but I thought it was about time that they got their own little teeny tiny pictures because I'm running out of space. I added Hong Lo, which is the Empress's maid. I don't think she'll become relevant in later episodes, but she deserved a place. She helped Empress realise that she needed to get back into it. There's also a teeny, teeny, tiny picture of Consort Chun's maid, Yuhu, alongside Consort Chun, obviously. So let's delve right into episode 5, or as I like to call it, the 4D chess episode with the plotting that's going on here. Noble Consort Gao buys Ying Lu's act and lets her go. Imperial concubine Jia says that Ying Lu may have just been acting and suggests that they find out. So Noble Consort Gao's maid, Ju Lan, goes out and sees that Ying Lu is still outside and still acting dumb. So Noble Consort Gao and Imperial concubine Jia are satisfied for now. But as Imperial concubine Jia leaves, she confides in her maid saying something isn't quite right. Ying Lo is being sick from the rice balls she ate while pretending to be lacking developmentally. She ate way too many, it's quite a rich and glutinous food that should be enjoyed in small portions slowly. And Ying Lo was pretending to be intellectually stumped, so number one, she requested food that a noble consort was eating and then ate way too much of it trying to display that she was lacking common sense when it came to etiquette and the consumption of said food. Which is why Noble Consort Gao bought her act to begin with. The maids are all going to bed and Jia Xiang is concerned because Ying Lo isn't back and she wants to go and look for her. Jin Shou suggests that she's been seeing a guard, recalling the time that Ying Lo was seen sneaking off with Qing Shi. Ling Long says she thinks that Ying Lo won't be back, but just as she says that, Ying Lo returns. The next day, the maids are having breakfast. Ling Long gets up from the table, but Ying Lo grabs her arm and pulls her to sit back down. Ying Lo has figured out that it was Ling Long who informed Noble Consort Gao's maid, Ji Lan, about Ying Lo warning Noble Lady Yu about the low quack cream being poisonous, as Ling Long was there when Ying Lo told her. Ling Long claims it was merely a slip of the tongue, but Ying Lo forces Ling Long to eat the rest of the lotus rice powder balls she brought back from Chu Sha Palace as punishment for ratting her out, and therefore putting her life in danger. Ying Lo goes to visit Aunt Fung. She accidentally wets Aunt Fung's clothes with tea so that she can search her room for clues about her sister under the guise of retrieving dry clothes, but she doesn't find anything. Jin Sho is spreading a rumour that Ying Lo is having an affair with a guard, claiming that she saw the whole thing, and Auntie Zhang takes Ying Lo to the side and asks her about the rumour. She makes it clear she doesn't believe the rumour, but rumours can be dangerous and warns her to be careful. Jin Sho is annoyed that Ying Lo is praised more than her and pledges to find evidence of the affair. Late at night, Ying Lo gets out of bed. Ling Long sees and wakes Jin Sho up, who then tries to follow Ying Lo. The next day, Xin Cho tells Aunt Fung that Ying Lo left the bedroom and didn't return till dawn, but says she was unable to catch up with her. Ling Long is asked to identify the guard she saw Ying Lo with, and later she thinks she found him, and so Jin Cho tells Aunt Fung. Jin Cho spies Ying Lo giving a gift to Qing Shi. Fu Hong walks past, Jin Cho obviously reporting what she witnessed to him, and Fu Hong demands to see the gift. He hands over the gift to Fu Hung and Fu Hung's friend Halan Chan, and it turns out it was a stone. Fu Hung's friend Halan Chan thinks it symbolizes that her heart is as hard as stone to him. It's a rejection. Qing Shi is told to recite the guard's rules a hundred times. Three months pass and there is still no evidence. Ying Lu is sick after gagging on food at mealtime, and Jin Sho makes a comment about pregnancy symptoms. Aunt Zhang measures the girls and Ying Lo's waist has become thicker, but she isn't eating due to her sickness. Ying Lo changes in private and Ling Long sees that her stomach has grown. With all this pointing towards Ying Lo being pregnant, which is evidence of an affair, 
Aunt Fung is informed. Manager Wu turns up to the embroidery house and confronts Ying Lo after Aunt Fung reports her. She brings forward Jin Xiao as a witness. Aunt Yang and Aunt Jiang go to inspect Ying Lo to determine if she is pregnant. Before she goes, Ying Lo confirms with Manager Wu that the punishment for slander is to be expelled from the palace. The verdict is in. Ying Lo is still a virgin. Aunt Jiang explains that it must have been the rice balls causing indigestion and therefore bloating and so her stomach appeared to grow. Jin Sho argues with this but is put in her place by Aunt Yan. Aunt Feng and Jin Sho blame each other and beg for Ying Lo's forgiveness. Jin Sho is given 30 canes and is sent to do hard labour. Aunt Feng is given 40 canes and expelled from the palace. Ying Lo goes to see Aunt Feng before she is taken away. It's revealed that Ying Lo used padding under her robes to make her stomach appear bigger, faked morning sickness, went out late at night and gave Qing Shi the stone, all to give the illusion something was going on. Aunt Feng makes a comment about her sister and Ying Lo demands to know what happened to Ying Nin, her older sister. Aunt Feng only knows that she was banished and Ying Nin gave her the pendant that Ying Lo found as a gift. Ying Lo reveals it was she who made the pendant and gave it to Ying Nin and she would never give it away. Aunt Feng then confesses she took the pendant from her sister's body and the rest of Ying Nin's possessions are in a bundle. Aunt Feng tells Ying Lo to stop investigating and that Ying Nin made a big mistake and to ask Aunt Jiang about it because she knows. I have made an improvement on the chart at this point in time. I've made the lines thinner so there's more room. I've also added black outline so you can see the colours better. And I've made the made images slightly bigger than they were before. So we have the addition of Aunt Yan. Not sure if she's going to come back but she's there now. And Manager Wu. We have seen him before in episode 1 where he went round supervising and seeing all of the maids embroidery work. But he really wasn't a big deal in that episode all he really did was get a snitch fired so we do now have an addition of another guard halan cha i think i said halan chan because i was thinking of like chan as in the japanese chan this is chinese charlie stay on track i asked you guys if you would prefer frequent videos that were shorter in this series or whether you would prefer longer videos that were less frequent and in the polls, you guys said that you would like more frequent content that is shorter. So rather than my original, original plan of doing 20 episodes per part, which looking back is going to be near impossible to do anyway, and retracting my second plan of 10 episodes per video, which still would have been well over an hour, we are doing five episodes per part. And therefore, episode six is going to be the last one. We have covered episode two to six in this video. Let's get into episode 6 then. Ying Lo finds Aunt Jiang and tells her Wei Ying Nin is her older sister. She wants to know why Aunt Jiang never said that Armin and Ying Nin are the same person. Aunt Jiang says she's disappointed in Ying Nin as she made a big mistake, and Ying Lo demands to know what mistake. According to Aunt Jiang, Ying Nin went out one night, came back in the morning and was caught by Manager Wu. They found her in a skirt in the gardens and they suspected her of having an affair with a palace guard. She was spared from execution as it was the Empress Dowager's birthday coming up and so they didn't want to spill blood in the palace and so was given 50 lashes and expelled from the palace, afterwards taking her own life. Ying Lo says she saw finger bruises around Ying Nin's neck. She was strangled. Ying Lo shows Auntie Jiang a piece of jade, presumably was in with Ying Nin's possession, that she obtained from last episode. Auntie Jiang obviously recognises it, but denies that she does. There's an inscription on it, but Ying Lo is illiterate, and if Zhang doesn't tell her what it says, she will ask somebody else. And so Auntie Jiang relents. She says the inscription states it belongs to Fuka Fu Hung, Empress's older brother. This is why people don't want her investigating into the matter, because it involves a nobleman. Later on in the evening, the Emperor hears singing. It's Noble Lady Shu. She's obviously trying to get his attention by singing when he's nearby. When asked, she says that she wrote it for his enjoyment. But she's singing about willow trees and there are none in the palace, so... He asks her if she's stupid or blind. 
He's seen through her trick of trying to seduce him and forces her to sing until dawn. At Consort Chun's palace, she asks to take a bath, but it's not pleasant as the water is cold and her maid Yuhu is concerned because she's still sick. The emperor is offered the tiles with the consort's name on. In Imperial China, when an emperor was deciding on who he wanted to spend the night with out of his harem, he would be brought some tiles with their names inscribed on them. And once he has chosen which consort he wants to spend the night with, he'll pick up that tile and flip the name over. It's a discreet way of announcing that you've chosen who your booty call is for the night. He's a little irritated that Consort Chan's name isn't there again because she's sick again and says he will go and visit her. He visits and they briefly speak about Harmony and Noble Consort Gao. Noble Consort Gao is from an influential and powerful family and she asks him whether or not he's tolerant of her based on that and him being concerned that if he gets on the Gao clan's bad side that would be a problem for him maintaining power but he reminds her that the harem are not to be involved in politics. After he leaves, she tells Yuhu that she only spoke about it so that he would leave. The Emperor notes to Manager Lee that Consort Chun is always finding ways to refuse him, which explains why she took a freezing cold bath in the middle of the night. Maybe she's trying to make herself more sick so the Emperor won't come and visit her. He decides instead to move on to visit Chang Chun Palace, the Empress's residence. They speak of how Consort Chun always shuts herself away and is emotionally unavailable, finding ways to stay away from the Emperor. But the Empress says that she's just a bit sensitive and he needs to take more care of her. The Empress talks about cutting down on extravagances. For example, Noble Consort Gao has new carpets put in her palace every single year, leading to waste, and suggests this could lead to a toxic competitive culture in the palace. The Empress says she will no longer wear pearl or jade and will wear fake flowers in her hair rather than real ones. In respect to historical figures, this is an accurate representation of Empress Fuka. She didn't like spending a lot of money on luxurious things and was known to be very frugal. The Emperor is staying the night and Mingyu tells the Empress to use this to her advantage and produce a male heir because otherwise Noble Consort Gao will become a lot more arrogant but Empress can't find the courage to make a definitive move. The next day, Ying Lo wonders how to get close to Fu Hung. The maids are working on the Emperor and Empress Dowager's clothes and clothes for the Empress's birthday the following month. Ying Lo is appointed the role of main seamstress and is given responsibility for looking after the peacock thread. Peacock thread is thread made of gold and silver woven together. It is extremely precious and if this was damaged or lost, it would be all of the maid's heads. Later on, a fire breaks out in the maid's chambers and everybody rushes to put it out. But Yinglo realizes that everybody has gone to the maid's chambers, but nobody was in the workshop and looking after the peacock thread. So she rushes to the workshop to find that the Empress's robes have been slashed and the peacock thread is missing. Everybody is gathered together to present their gifts to the Empress. For example, Consort Chun gives warm jade, a jade that emits heat, a thoughtful gift for Empress who is known to have a cold body. And Noble Lady Xu shows off and gives a flower sculpture made of gems and gold. Noble Consort Gao brings up shade to a next level when she has the audacity to arrive late, using the excuse that she was busy preparing the gift, and presents a child-giving statue. Yeah, after Empress lost her only child, she doesn't have any children. Somebody rightly points out that this is definitely rubbing salt in the wounds of the Empress publicly. Being obviously fake as hell, Noble Consort Gao says no. According to the ancestral traditions, only the Empress can use gold instruments, and therefore she ordered the blacksmith department to make this specially for the Empress, in a way that would only be suitable for her to use. Noble Consort Chen says that it should probably stay at Noble Consort Gao's palace, Chu Sha Palace, but Noble Consort Gao laughs and says that she's still young and she doesn't need it because she can have children whenever she wants, but the Empress does. Yeah, this is definitely shade on a whole new level. Empress does not rise to this and instead accepts. The departments are all waiting outside to present their gifts, with Yinglo also waiting. 
She stalls to give hers, but eventually has to enter and speaks extremely slowly to stall even further. For what, though? Imperial concubine Jia and noble consort Gao instantaneously recognize her from the time that she was dragged off to Chu Xia Palace and ate a load of rice balls. And the episode ends at that moment, with Imperial concubine Jia and noble consort Gao recognizing her, and everybody around waiting for Ying Lo to present a gift that should be made with peacock thread, but obviously does not have any. The chart has pretty much remained the same, there's no real differences here, we haven't got any new people and no one has been yeeted and there's no new romances. And so we will leave things here until part 2 which will cover episodes 7 to 11. And I'll see you guys then. Bye!